section three Shadowhawks. So they have also gone the heavy style. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting match if both teams are fairly range focused. By my count, 228 is actually down one heavy, so if it goes to a long game, three heavies are going to have to do quite a bit of work in order to match the potential from the other side. And Cicada on Fighting Monk's side is actually a PPC Cicada, so he can be helping out. So Fighting Monk's is a little spread out in their base area, but 228 has pushed largely up towards the top part of the base. And for the record, 228 is in red, and the fighting monks are blue on your screen. I want to call them red trunks and blue trunks, but... Red corner and blue corner. You see a little bit of exchange of fire in the early part among these teams at range. Now, this, these mechs would be mostly doing their full damage at that range, so it is something that you don't want to get hit too many times by. Doesn't look like it. there are any strikes going out quite yet. They just became active. Now, although Fighting Monks have that PP PPC Cicada, the 228th do have two ER Large Laser Ravens. And so, while not quite as long range as the Gauss that the 228th Heavies probably have, they, they stack up with their damage over time. So the Funny Monks have their cataphracts grouped up pretty tight there in the middle part uh, by the water, whereas their light mechs and a couple of shadow hawks are up top on upper base. And 228th has moved just about all their mechs now to the upper part of their base while Edmeister sits in his Jenner, I believe, just probably spotting them out back in the normal part of their, their base near the boardwalk. Yeah, he's just going to be watching for a cap rush from the water that everybody else can't see because the Citadel is in the way. And that was actually the pretty much the same position I was doing in the Raven earlier tonight. So at this point, neither team has really done much damage. We see a couple of oh, back in the 80s, but almost everybody else is pretty fresh. So they are being really conservative right now. No one probably wants to take a huge risk because, as, we as people talked about in the other games, if you have a mech go down early, it really sets you up for a bad spot because now you're thinking, all right, at some point we're going to have to push base and we're going to have to push through turrets. Now, if Assault goes to time, do the kills tiebreak or do you need a 12-0? If assault goes, it's if a kill. If you have one kill, you'll win. Just stating for the record. So yeah, by the time you're down one, you are under tremendous pressure to try and equalize. Yeah, and you can equalize either. You need to reply with your own arties and try to get a light, because it only takes one arty strike on a light, as Siri proved in <laughs> the other game. It doesn't take very much to take down a light mech with a good arty strike placement. And that is one danger with your if your lights aren't moving around a lot, is that they might just be able to find a head somewhere, maybe place it right behind your feet. You don't see it. Teammates don't call it out soon enough, and there it goes out on the mech. It could happen really quick like that. One thing 228 is doing is they're having Versenix's Raven just stand in the middle of their formation, and while he's getting ER large laser pokes, he's also just providing them ECM and preventing locks from being obtained, just making it that much harder to counter snipe them. So one of the FM Capfrax is pretty damaged right now. His rear torso is crit, rear left torso is crit, and his head is, is crit out from the exterior armor, which means it only takes him a little airstrike, a little splash damage, something like that, and it could rip off his head. And airstrikes are infamous for doing that, especially on Cataphrax, so that's something he has to be worried about at this point. Yeah, and it's not just during this sniping and trading phase, it's also when this moves into a full brawl. If he gets caught out by an Ardian air, that will tip it. And... You're right, he's down to 60%, and Evil Cow also down to 74%. Uh, you see, uh, Rafa Lapo's actually taken an ER PPC AC20 Shadowhawk, which means he's got the range of the ER PPC, but it's also, if in case it's a close fight, he can still do some damage.
Evil has, has some damage, but it's pretty superficial. It's all overspread out. Nothing too severe in his cicada. Now here, Ragnar Iron Arm is in the oh, is in a Gauss Jaeger for 228, and he's basically sitting back. I mean, it's it's, it's a hard fight with that Gauss Jaeger, but he can actually see some lights under the dropship. I wonder if he's gonna be able to peg one of these guys off, but it might be some buildings in the way. He does manage to land a nice shot. Yeah, and one thing to say for the Gauss is at 2,000 meters per second, it is the fastest projectile in the game. 220 is really good with those mechs. I mean, they can hit somebody moving pretty well fairly consistently, so if they find one person, that's all it really takes. I mean, when I'm in a light, I have this concept of sort of exclusion range, where based on the enemy's route, I know how far away I have to stay from them in order to be safe. And against your traditional sniper, I feel pretty safe at about 800, 850. Against a Gauss sniper, I'm still terrified out to about, like, 1,050, 1,100. The 220 so, is still the, monitoring the right side, making sure that uh, FM doesn't get any uh, quick ideas about rushing base, and maybe they can just pick somebody again looking for arty strikes. But they might be out arty strikes at this point, the lights. Sometimes lights dump them pretty quick. Especially when you're bringing a Generaf, it only has the two module slots, and you're going to be using one of those for a cool shot, and the other ones can be your strike. Compare that to mechs like the Gener D, the Ember, the Raven, which have three or four module slots they can easily load up on dual strikes. So there's been about six and a half minutes elapsed in this match. Some damage trade from strikes either way. Fighting monks seem to be on the uh, the losing exchange, losing side of that exchange, with Phantom X's Cataphract down the 59%. Furia is in his cataphract. He's actually pushed under the party room. And he is in front. He's looking much closer than the other cataphracts are for some shots. I'm curious if he's going to nope. be able to pull this out or if he might even be able to get pushed on. You know, by the looks of this, fighting monks have sent their lights down the Sinel. They may be trying to do a split push with their heavies up the right side, engage the 228 heavies, and do a light, uh, light cap run. But... As I say that, it's not actually all the lights down by Sinel, it's only about half. And they don't really have that many lights to, I mean, it would take a long time to get that base cap done with the three lights on 228 still sitting near base. It's not too much of a threat at this point. Plus they wouldn't have had time to deal with the turrets, so they're going to be taking the medium laser and LRM fire. But I believe somebody in chat quoted earlier, it's 38 seconds to fully cap the base with six light mechs on base. And that's without any of the 228 lights interfering with the base cap. So now, the 3D from FM has, he's splashed all over, but his rear left torso is crit, and he's in a dual PPC, dual AC5, which would be an XL. Without without seeing the speed, it's, it, you can't really, can't really guess, but that rear torso out could be a single shot, or it could be another arty strike, a bad opportunity. Oh, the mech does drop, though. One that mech is, is down for FM. Spider. That is Renegade Preacher's Spider 5D. I do not see how he died, but it could very well have been just a good Gauss shot. It could have been, but at 36%, he was at 70 or 80 before in his position. I'm thinking it was just a nice arty strike that took him out, or, not, or an air strike. I think he might be right there. Yeah, looking at his position, it was safe behind cover, but not safe for the strike from the sky. At this point, 228 doesn't have any severely damaged mechs. Do you think there's... Like, all right thinking about just playing really passive from this point on, thinking maybe we'll see our decent errors are out, they can just sit back and wait for the push, similar to how Lords is able to uh, wait for the Donegal to push in. I think they just continue with their current position. They've been w winning the trade pretty well. They've been they've got a few mechs down in the 70s, but they're not th all that damaged, to be honest. And I think they just continue putting out strikes, continue putting down surrounds downfield. And I think the only thing that changes that strat is if their heavy mechs start running low on ammo. So if you're FM right now, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about doing to try to make this game equal? Well, they have to decide if that was a freak accident and they're still winning the trade, or if this has been just a losing strategy and they need to change things up. The thing complicating that is that they haven't got any readouts 
on how damaged 228 is because Pisces Zero and Versnix have been near the heavies this entire time with the ECM and preventing scout readouts. So they're in I, terms of tell flying blind. It's a good point with that or with uh, the Raven sitting there. It's hard for them to tell. The thing is, I just, it was just a strike down about 15 seconds ago that completely whipped. And that, you know, at this point, you don't you want to make sure those, those strikes are going to be effective. And you better hate, hang on to them and make sure you're getting that target down just right. Yeah, I mean, like, you hear it in some games and in punk games that the strikes just never stop. But when you're playing this sort of game, there is definitely a finite amount of strikes on your team. So the most damaged mech on 228th is a bed hanger here in a Shadowhawk. He's got a rear torso cord, rear right torso cord, but that's that's rear damage, and they're mostly fighting a front fight, so it's just pretty much splashed already and at 75%. He's doing all right, and Defunct at 71% is also not that bad off. And mostly damage all around, a little bit on legs. you got to be a little bit careful with the legs there, but he's doing all right, so they're still in really good shape. And 228th has uh, actually brought on their cataphracts two PPCs, two AC5s, so they're running a bit more durable. They have experimented in the past with like single gauss to PPC, dual gauss PPC sort of cataphracts and those are because the gauss, if your armor is opened up and the gauss is crit, it has a high chance of exploding and taking other things with it. And if you're running that sort of loadout and your cataphracts are actually pretty damn squishy, but it I looks like they're running the standard bowl non-explosive 2 PPC AC5. And FM is starting to push up on the old on upper base, and they look like, they, I don't know what they're planning on doing here, but they have pushed all their mechs now into this upper base up the dirt path. So they might be thinking about pushing across, they might be thinking about opening up some new jump sniping angles. They might feel like they're down too much with eight minutes left to go. They have plenty of time, but they might just feel, they could be thinking about a push here, so we'll see what's going on. Now, if they push, are the 228th generators going to go for cap, or are they going to come to the fight? I think they're going to come to the fight. The cap, there's no reason to go for it. You're up on a kill. You, you're probably thinking, if you got any targeting going on, that you're ahead. Here we go. So generators are starting, and Cicada are pushing out. Gener pretty much a full push by the lights now with the Cataphract Shadowhawks lagging behind just slightly. They're going to be pushing up to the right side here of Upper City. 228th is trying to fall back, get a good firing line established, or just get out entirely. Not sure about how what this timing here because the Jenner and Cicada are up there all alone and they're up there for a while as these Cataphracts and Shadowhawks slowly cross away. They won't be getting many shots down. One more mech does drop for FM and they do take down the first 228 mech. Oh no, that's I'm sorry, that is actually three mechs now down for FM. And you're right, that was another Jenner that, that was sent in early and actually the Cataphract uh, was picked off the side. Now, FM is just about at the point where they're committing fully into Upper City, but to do it has had a lot of time to react to this and set up their formation. Yeah, they their have a really nice in. formation set up here. They've closed off the angles and they have their, their lights working from behind and on the sides, which is a, just exactly what you want to have happen right now. And they are up now four kills. 228 is taking down four FM next and has not lost one yet. Yeah, this isn't as dominant as the House of Lords firing line last game, but it is turning into a meat grinder. Oh. Six mechs down yeah. for the fighting monks. Eight mechs now, only four left. And that aggression is going to peter out. Yeah, those three mechs left alive and pushing on. Two mechs left, and it looks like 228 is going to take this convincingly. Well, final mechs down in the water fighting a Jenner K left alive, and he drops down. And good game, the 2 2 8th. Yeah, really well played by them. They used Arty Strikes effectively, they sniped uh, range effectively, and they forced FM to push in. And if you look at the screen at the end of game, the 2 2 8th damage was actually spread quite nicely, so everybody was getting work done. In fact, the defunct and Eric Pride in the Cataphracts were actually some of the lower damage on the team. So. I'm not surprised in that type of engagement, though, because they probably weren't feeling very many jumps, jump shots or worth taking too many big jumps. But Pride's at 236 damage, with, which is 
fine and the lights were all spread out you know really the yeah you're right those damage is really spread out person Nick's leading at 414 in that rave and he probably is able to use the ecm effectively not only to get strikes but picking away at er large at max range can work and those guys are sitting up top for a while those 3ds were trying to poke out and over time those those two er large will definitely add up and they did and in this game you know they 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 won 12-0 that is that's a really strong win against a good fm team